Greetings squad, my name's Emmanuel, or some people call me Mr. E, and we're going to be talking today to a guy that's pretty much one of the greatest writers that is right now working for both Image Comics, DC, and I think Marvel also. So he's a really cool guy. His name is Hornsack, and we're going to be talking about uh, his new um, comic book, which is called Dead Boy Detectives. It's out now, number one. And we're also going to be talking about uh, The Good Asian, which was released a while back. And we're also going to be talking about uh, Infidel, which was one of his uh, earlier works. But, you know, we're going to be talking about a lot of uh, comic books, uh, TV, media in general. So I hope you enjoyed this interview. And let's go with the intro. Hi, Movie Squad fans. So today I'm here with Hornsack Pichosete, and uh, we're going to be talking about his new comic book, Dead Boy Detectives, number one. Um, it's from the Sandman universe. And not only that, we're also going to talk about uh, a little book he wrote a while back called The Good Asian. And so thank you very much. Uh, we're going to call you Mr. Hark. That's the nickname I'm going to give you for this interview. And so, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself to the to the crowd? Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Hornsack Pichet Show. Uh, I write comics and TV. I wrote a book called The Good Asians uh, featuring Edison Hark. I uh, wrote another book called Infidel. Right now, I have a book coming out called Sandman Universe, Dead Boy Detectives. I wrote some TV shows as well, Marvel's Cloak and Dagger, Two Sentence Horror Stories. And yeah, I, I got to start as a comic book editor, then became a, t a TV exec for DC Comics, and now I'm writing comics and TV. Wow, that's that's a long resume. And I like that <laughs> because while I was doing the research, you have done a lot of work for both Marvel, DC, and Image Comics, which yes. I think for any comic book fan, that's, that's, that's good because that means more material to read. And so I would like to start uh, talking about how did you begin to write comics? Like, how was the origin story for Mr. Hart? <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, uh, I mean, I started, I came in through comics for, as an editor. So uh, I was an assistant editor to Karen Berger, who was the editor-in-chief of Vertigo Comics, which uh, was a now defunct uh, imprint of, of, uh, of DC. Black Label is kind of the spiritual um, yeah. air of, of Vertigo. And uh, and there I worked on Sandman and other books. And so I kind of came in as an editor and I was very sort of happy editing. And then I, but I, I'd start off as a writer. I had no intentions of getting into comics. Actually comics, I was been a fan of comics since I was a kid. And it was the one thing I had left that I did for fun. Everything else was work. And um, a, a friend told me about a, uh, a position that opened up as, and he wasn't into comics either, but a position, a friend of his told about a position as assistant editor working for Karen Berger at Vertigo. And he gave me a call or sent me an email and it was just kind of like, I don't know, understand what any of those words mean, but I feel like you would, seems like this would be right for you. And I wasn't looking for a full-time job at the time. I wanted to freelance write, but I really wanted to meet Karen Berger. I, I, that was the reason why I took the interview. I wanted, just wanted to meet, I never thought I would get the job. I just wanted to meet Karen Berger. And I met her, she invited me back for editing tests. She invited me back for another interview. And then I decided to uh, be Karen's uh, assistant editor. And that led to me to become a full editor. And that would eventually lead to me to get invited out to LA where I still am to be a TV exec for, for DC. But the whole time I wanted to write and comics were so fulfilling as an editor, uh, it, it let me drift away from writing. But coming you know, in television as a TV exec, I was a little farther away from the creative decisions as I was as a comic book editor, at least. I was still involved, but not as, when you're a comic book editor, you're really in it. Mm -hmm. And I missed that. And so I thought it was finally time for me to get back to my roots of writing. And then I sort of started writing comics and TV. And, you know, I was able to use my um, my contacts and comics to put together the pitch packet for my first book from Image, which is a book called Infidel. And I pitched that to Eric Stevenson. He liked it. And then that kind of started the whole ball rolling. That's pretty cool. And, you know, I wanted to know, uh, what does it mean to be a good Asian? And that's <laughs> Uh, the title, The Good Asian, of your, uh, I would say, your most famous comic book for now. Uh, this is actually yeah. volume two. I got it at a local comic book shop in 
Puerto Rico called Metro Comics, so shout out to them. Uh, but can you please tell us in your words, what does it mean to be a good Asian? Yeah, uh, for me, you know, I, I part of the reason why I wrote the book is it's a question I'm trying to figure out. And, and I think part of that book and its, you know, its, its future volumes is asking the questions and trying out all the different possible answers. So I don't know if I know what it means to be a good Asian, um, but part of what I'm interested is all the different ways it's being defined, both from inside and outside of the community. And that's kind of what that book is about. And it's kind of what the story of Edison Hark is, is about, is you know, what does that mean and, and how many different answers there are to that question and which make more sense than others. So, so I, I have an anticlimactic answer, which is, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I think that the book tackles it in a pretty unique way. And I was telling my friends about that. Uh, one of the things that I like about your writing is that it's a fresh perspective. You know, it's something that we haven't Thank read you. before in comics. And I'm not saying that because I'm talking to you. I'm saying that because while I was reading both The Good Asian and A Dead Boy Detectives, there's just something about um, your culture and your way of thinking that uh, like permeates through to the pages. And it's actually really fun how you, you know, you tackle that that answer. And at some point, I would like to see this either in a show or a movie because it's it's going to be like, and I know it's, it may sound uh, weird or awkward or whatever, but, you know, it's going to be like the crazy rich agents of comic books, you know? Something like <laughs> I that. really appreciate that. I really appreciate it. I, I hope that, I hope we make an inkling of what crazy rich, of the money crazy rich agents made. Yeah. Uh, but I like to thank you. That is a, I really appreciate that compliment quite a bit. Thank you. Yeah. So, I, and it uh, means a lot to me that you like the work. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of talk about the good Asian on internet, and I feel that uh, that's just gonna keep progressing because now you have you know Deadpool Detectives number one yeah. out. Yeah, I got this at Midtown Comics, and it's pretty good, <laughs> yeah. people. Yeah. So, uh, how did you get to write uh, for for that new miniseries? How how uh, did yeah. you get the job? I you know I've known uh, the executive editor of Black Label, Chris Conroy you know, going back to my time in DC and I was just catching up with him and, you know, socially. And he was saying, he was talking about how he's going to bring the same, they were bringing the same man universe back in like a little bit of a different way. And, you know, and it quickly became, you know, different ways I could potentially participate. And so through those conversations came my take of like, oh, well, you know, you could, you know, let's do the dead boy detectives and have to meet Ty Ghost and have it be like real horror. Because the thing that for anyone not familiar with dead boy detectives, it's one of my favorite creations from Neil Gaiman. And it's about these two boys that die almost 100 years apart, 75 years apart. And um, and their ghosts come back, they become best friends, and for fun, they just solve crimes. And they're not great at it, but, you know, they like yeah. doing it. And um, and so I love and, – and but part of what the book was always about was it took place right dab center in the middle – of uh, Seasons of Mist, the Sandman story, Seasons of Mist, where the dead had sort of risen. And it was a very dark, very serious story. And about these two very idealistic, very optimistic, very innocent boys tra traversing this, you know, th this world of like horror. And I love that. And I loved, you know, the juxtaposition of their innocence with the gravity of horror. And, and it's part of what made them so appealing. And so I, you know, and, and you look at what James Tynan is doing on on uh Sandman, on a nightmare country and he's kind of brought salmon back to its horror roots and i just thought that was a and, and i and he's doing that to talk about where america is today and so i kind of want, like the idea of playing you know in the offshoots of that realm of a way to talk my own sort of you know commentary of where america is today and you sort of the dead boy detectives of like what is the place of this sort of innocence amidst all this like grave horrible stuff that's sort of happening is there a place for it? How does it survive? You know, those things spoke very well to me, very much to me. And, and so to, to, to do that story, I miss a culture class about two different types of ghosts. And again, it's about East meets West and is there a middle ground sort of between them? You know, there, um, that, uh, all that sound like really fun to me. And, and fortunately, you know, the powers that be at DC uh, agreed. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty cool. The part that you said about the kids are not like, 
figuring it out. They're not pretty good at being detectives yeah. because I think that's what makes it interesting. While I was reading the the first um book, it was really fun because normally you either get like um sort of uh like these kids that can figure out anything. They're like Sherlock Holmes, but yeah, I feel that it it brings a lot more realism when you get these kids that they're trying to figure out first of all who they are, you know, as that yeah. that kids. And then yeah. how are they going to work together to solve these crimes? So I just think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's something that it's refreshing in the comic book genre. Thank you know, you. we get a Thank lot you. of bunch of detective stories, but uh, how often do we get like Dead Boy Detectives <laughs> type of story, you know? So it, it's pretty cool to get that. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I think people ask me a lot, like, what's the difference between writing a detective story like a good Asian, writing a detective story like Dead Boy Detectives? And and the one is one is dead and the others aren't, the other isn't. But the other thing is just like, Edison Hark is good at this. It's his job. Edward and Charles are not good at this. It is not their job. They would not, if you saw them in a group of people, you would not pick them to do this job. They just want to do it. They just find it fun. Yeah, and, and it's also the fact that they're they are kids so there's yeah even though they're dead it's like they still haven't figured out who they are you know yeah, and they, that's Hark, very true Hark knows pretty much who he is or at least he knows where he's supposed to be going and yeah. and uh we can say that Hark it's more like um let's say uh like crime and here we have horror so that yeah. that's also pretty cool to have like those opposing themes uh or, or john ross working together you know it's, it's yeah cool. yeah no i yeah it's it's been really fun to sort of play with both and you know one of the things i like to do with my books for my own sake is to keep them different and so even this is very different from my my first horror book infidel which is a kind of a i i see dead boy detectives as a little bit more like new line horror uh yeah. like new line studios horror and um and and you know infidel is maybe more like age not really but a24 horror and so yeah. it's just to have something to look at the, it's, it's a different flavor of horror yeah so you're basically pitching infidel to a24 is that what you're saying oh yeah yeah that's exactly what it is. <laughs> this, take take it now yes if a24 is listening then take take, take it yes <laughs> yeah so do you feel that infidel could be either a show or a movie how do you think it would benefit more ah uh... I think it could be either. I think it depends in the right hands, honestly. I I see a version of Infidel working for both TV and and movies. So I I, I don't know if I'll handicap it by just sort of saying one. And we're we're yeah. also in this weird time too, where like, you know, if you extend two hours on a movie, it's all of a sudden a mini series. It's a television show. So like, yeah. so the the line isn't as as uh, hard as it once was. Yeah, that that's pretty true. And you know, while we're talking about that boy detectives. I know that there's talk about a new show that's going to be for HBO Max. Um, what do you think about that? Like, are you connected? I mean, to the I show? cannot wait. Uh, you know, I, I don't know anything that's going on on the show, uh, except I saw, you know, that the episode of Doom Patrol that the boys sort of popped up on that everybody else did. Although, you yeah. know, I know that they're recasting it for the show itself. Uh, so I don't know any, uh, I don't, I don't have any connections to the show. I, I actually know a person or people or two that are on the show. That work on the show, but I don't have I don't have any inside knowledge. I cannot wait though to see it. I'm yeah. so psyched, so so psyched. I think especially at a time where like Wednesday has done as well as it has, like yeah. it feels like they're, the you know the, the, there's a right there's an audience that's that for that kind of stuff. So I, I really hope yeah. you know people. I, I I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I feel like uh, for a long time I uh, I was a fan of Lemony Snicket's uh, both mm. the Nickelodeon adaptation and the Netflix one, and I feel like there's always been that that audience there, but it has not always been, you know, like, served or, or yeah. catered to. And so now I think that, as you said, with Wednesday, we have that chance to once again spark, uh, you know, the light into telling those type of stories because are the ones that people like, and if they're making money of it, I mean, everybody wins, right? Yeah, totally, totally. So yeah, so I mean, listen, I mean, you know, th this book definitely, the show existing is definitely one of the things that helped this book sort of exist. Yeah. And so if it's it, if it's a way to tell more stories, I'm all for it. Yeah, uh, would you like to like write at least one episode for the show? I think that, that <laughs> would be an interesting take. I, I would love that. I mean, I'm sure they have a very busy writing staff and a very full writing staff. 
Uh, yeah. I would love. I, I've, I've, you know, it's, it's a Berlanti show. I've worked in the Berlanti camp before. I would love for the chance, but I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have a very full docket. Yeah, and so um, you were telling me at first that you liked. Uh, you were first an editor, and then you became yeah. a writer. How do you think that writing has made you uh, a better editor? You know how Ooh. how you know how is writing maybe a better editor? Oh, that's interesting. Nobody's yeah. nobody's asked me that one before. Um. That's a really well. I I will say I haven't had a chance to edit since I started writing. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping to in the future slash near future. I'm hoping yeah. to do a little bit more editing, but I I haven't had a chance. So I don't know for a fact. And there's times I worry that writing has made me a worse editor. That it's made me yeah. too you know possessive and too micromanaging. Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. Um, I uh. I would hope that um, I, I would hope that I'm more sympathetic. I would hope I can speak to problems that are happening with more specificity. You know, if a scene isn't working or if it isn't, you know, I can say like, oh, give that character an objective. Like, oh, you know, I don't understand what the character wants in this. I hope I can more efficiently and more and and with efficiency comes specificity. Sort of uh, help. Um, you know, lead creators to to a story around storytelling problems. I don't know. I won't know that until I guess I try it, though. So I'm very. That's a really, really good question. I don't know if I have the answer yet. I, it, I I'm gonna have to I'll check back with me after I yeah. edit something, and I'll and I'll see what my answer is. Okay, that that's pretty cool. You know, it's also a work in progress. So I think that yeah. as creatives. We never stop, you know. We're always um, on this path to becoming better at our yeah, craft. Yeah, hopefully. So that's that's a pretty good answer. And you know, um, what has been a book that you have read in like the this last few years? You know, since the pandemic, that you have said, "Wow, I really love this book or this comic." You know, what has called you the most? Oh God, there's so many stuff that I read and I'm blown away by. Um, I just, you know, a lot of stuff that blows me away, they don't come to me recently. You know, they're just yeah. a sticks in your head. You know, um, Tom King, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, like that's fantastic. I still think about his last issue so much and like try to figure out different ways to steal from it. Um, you know, uh, uh, um, Jeff Lemire's Gideon Falls that he did with Andrea Sorrentino. Um, he, I'm fascinated by how he kind of, carved out a new subgenre of horror and I'm like fascinated that that's even possible um but they kind of both the two of them kind of did it with that book so that I, I I'm really impressed by that and that sort of sticks in my mind um you know uh you know Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu that you know definitely you know was something that sort of kind of blows blow, blew me away when I read it um what else what else uh Um, I just saw the Woman King like last night or two nights ago, two nights ago, and yeah. I I was blown away by that. It's so good. Uh, that and like I think Banshees and Sharon are probably my two favorite movies of the year. Um, right. yeah. So th those are some of the stuff that uh, I I always have a, I always have trouble answering that. I always have trouble answering that question. <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry about it. You're good. I think <laughs> that you mentioned all the people, all the right people. So that's good. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm loving yeah, and uh. Tom King's Human Target right now with Greg Smallwood. That's that's a great book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. So ooh, ooh, um, I know, I know. Yeah. One last thing, one thing. Uh I just discovered the show Mo on Netflix, which yeah, is it's fantastic. Good. It's so good and nobody's talking about it. I love that show. I yeah, love that I, show. I really I really love that comedian. He's he goes way yeah. back and he's just so funny. He was also in Black Adam and oh, was he it? was just oh. Yeah, he's he's one of the better parts of the movie. He's just okay. really funny. Uh, he plays like the the uncle of the kid. You know, um, when you see when people watch it, they're gonna know he's pretty funny and always has been. He has a couple of Netflix specials, and they're really good. So, oh, cool. yeah, that's cool, 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 cool. that's pretty cool. And you know, since we're talking about all of this craziness in the world and uh, not just media, um. Uh, What what is the next story you would like to tell? Oh, the next story I would like. So the the challenges I have is that I work so far apart that it's hard for me 
to tell to talk about in too much detail. Um, yeah. But um, I am working on the next Good Asian volume. It's slow, so people yeah. don't expect it soon. But it's coming. It's just gonna come yeah. slow. Um, those books take forever to put together. Yeah. Uh, it's the fault is always mine. Uh, there are a lot of research. Um, and uh, I and I, I'm hoping this year to try out a few different uh, a few different things. Uh, I've got. I don't know what's gonna come. You know, you never know with sort of schedules and sort of. Yeah. I like to play if it works out. If it's scheduling works out, I'd love to play in some and do a little bit more play in other people's like world and other people's yeah. creations. Do a little bit of that. I've got another uh, creator own book. Uh, I've been, you know, I've been I've been thinking about what sort of my next uh, sort of project might be. And I, I yeah. uh, aside from the good Asian, and you know, I'm I, I I'm thinking about playing in sort of like a new genre, a new genre. So so we'll see. I might I may do a little dabbling in sci-fi. And uh, it, it'll be very, very different, I think, than from what people would expect from me. Yeah, and have you met um, Neil Gaiman by any chance? I have met Neil. So I met Neil before I worked on on the book. Uh, being an editor uh, at Vertigo, I would I met Neil as an editor at Vertigo. So I actually worked on uh, P. Craig Russell did a comics adaptation of Sandman Dream Hunters, and I worked on that. And uh, and yeah, and so uh, and and working on that, I got to speak to Neil a couple of times, and he's the love. the thing about Neil. I still remember talking to Neil, where you're on a phone call with him, and he's such a nice guy. He's so um, he's such a nice guy, and he's and he's so personable that you just find yourself telling him things about your life and telling him, and then and he's so good about it, and then you kind of realize Neil Gaiman has no interest in what I'm talking. Like I, <laughs> this is not an interesting story. Yeah. He, no one should have any interest in what I'm talking about, but Neil is so engaging that he will make you believe he's interested in what you're talking about, and you would just tell him all these things, which is probably how he has such a good ear for dialogue, and he's such like a font of stories, because people just can't help but share stories with him. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good quality from him. I bet that while he's listening to you, he's writing his next book or something. <laughs> he, yeah, he might be like on the side. <laughs> Yeah, so oh, wow, cool that's thing, pretty cool. Yeah, I I actually like the fact that we got uh the Sandman TV show, um last year, uh that was uh such an interesting thing to happen, you know, because um the Sandman has been going uh if I'm not mistaken for like uh three decades now. Yeah, and, yeah. And finally, it's getting its own adaptation. People are watching it. Yeah. Uh, we have a good cast, so. I was just blown away by that show. And um, as we were talking about earlier, you know, with Wednesday, Sam, and we're getting back all these types of uh, genre TV shows that yeah. are really good, that people like. And I like the fact that they work on the obscure details. And, yeah. you know, they're telling stories that, that are really good stories because nowadays there's a lot of stories, but not necessarily good you know stories that we want to read and it makes it a little bit hard for us to find it but then there goes sam and wednesday and let's see who who goes next you know yeah also that boy detectives let's see who's the next you know um dark knight that right. um, that comes out out of the comics so um where can we find you online I am on uh, Twitter as as much as Twitter exists or doesn't exist uh, still. Real <laughs> underscore porn sack. Uh, I feel like I will be on Instagram for a while. That's real underscore p sack. Yeah. And if Hive ever comes back, I'm there as por just porn sack. So okay. So yes, that, that's pretty cool. Um, I actually, uh, you know, I'm following you since I met you uh, last year, and you're actually a pretty cool guy on social media. That that's that's Thank good you. and Thank you. I uh, appreciate that. let's see let's see how this whole thing blows up you know after the show debuts on hbo max he has a good following all of that i it's gonna come back to you because you're writing the mini series you know so i i hope so see. we'll see we'll see what happens like i said like you know i i know the show and the comic are different for for one yeah. you know the comic's about 12 year olds and the show's about kind of teenagers yeah. so they're yeah. different so i don't know hopefully there's uh, if people like the show they'll like the comics as well i mean I like the com. I I can't wait for the show because of the comments. So hopefully it goes both ways. Yeah. Um. Any shout outs you want to give out right now? You know, any friend, uh, your mom. You know. Uh, my mom. My mom. She'll she'll sort of kill me. Uh, who's you know what? Um, 
I have two friends. Uh, my friend Saber Prasada is, uh, is writing the new. Uh, there's a Ms. Marvel miniseries coming out of Dark Web. He's writing that right now, and I'm super excited for him. I just read the first issue. That's a ton of fun. I think he did a great job with that. My friend uh, Jay Holtham has a Bishop miniseries coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, Bishop um, War College, I think it's called. And I think he, I think he's he's off the internet, and I think the internet will 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 blow up and and get destroyed and come back together when uh, people <laughs> read his his book. Wow, that that's pretty good. So people, there you have it. Uh, he were we were here with Mr. H himself, Mr. <laughs> Mark Borzak. Uh, thank you for such a long time. It was a great, you. you know, um, interview. I really had a lot of fun. Thank you Same for here. allowing me to practice my English a lot more. Your English is fantastic. And Thank you. And so where can we get uh, your comic books? So people buy uh, them. Any comic book stores. Uh, the Good Asian uh, is available in any place where they sell books or any online place to sell books, especially any comic book stores. I love comic book stores. There's yeah. actually going to be a hardcover collecting the whole thing in one volume in end of May in bookstores June. So that way you don't have to like track down two separate copies. You can just read the whole thing yeah. in one thing. And it's a gorgeous package by designer Jeff, our designer Jeff Powell really um just kicked it out of the park uh so yeah so at that uh but yeah you can find them any place where they sell, sell comics dead boy detectives is coming out the new issue i think it's coming out the last week of january uh yeah. there, it's a got a really cool um ratio variant that actually has i wish i could pull it. it's by dave johnson and it's actually got like a tie logo so uh and it, oh. it uh, brings me particular joy that there will be comic book shops, some comic book shops, because it's a it's a yeah. limited variant, but there'll be some yeah. comic book shops that have like Thai writing, you know, on the cover. You can find it. I think that's so cool. Yeah, I'll I'll have to check that out. Um, let's see where this whole thing goes. I think that that boy detectives has a lot for the future. I don't think it's dead yet, so that that's <laughs> good, you know. Yeah, it's good for your business. Uh, so thank you very much once again, Horzak. Anything you want to tell to our lovely audience before you sign off? Uh, thank you for reading if you're reading. If you're not reading, uh, Dead Boy Detectives, number one, is out now. Number two will come out soon. It's about Edward and Charles meeting up with Ty Ghosts, and it's 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 a little bit uh, – it, it's very much a, a horror book, and it's kind of – uh, a way for me to find a way to make horror relevant with all everything that's happening right now. Yeah, awesome. So there you have it, folks. Thank you very much. And uh, I will see you on the next interview of Movie Squad. All right, see ya. Bye. <laughs>